Hey, what is up guys? My name is Alan from The Flutter Bits. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be talking about raids or raid. Yeah, I'm not talking about in-game raid like this or this or this. I'm talking about raids when it comes to your storage devices, specifically hard drives and SSDs. Now, if you don't know what raid means, this is what it means. But in a nutshell, it basically combines two or more of your storage devices, plop them into something new, and there are different types of it. And uh, yeah, that's what RAID does. <laughs> now, I want to talk about something first. Let's talk about the difference between a Windows RAID versus a BIOS RAID. But I'll be talking about the different types of RAID later. But these are the two main things, you know. The one that I'll be doing in this video is the Windows RAID, while I may do a future video about BIOS RAID. But basically, everything, you know, the differences right now is on your screen. And then, in a nutshell, Windows RAID is done when you already installed your Windows and you can do it within Windows itself, which I'll be doing on later in this video and showing you how to do it. While BIOS RAID is configured on the BIOS or your UEFI RAID utility. And that heavily depends on what motherboard you have, what storage devices you have, and does your storage devices actually, you know, is compatible on your motherboard RAID controller. Now, those are a lot of different things to keep track on. So let's go back to Windows RAID. Now, with Windows RAID, performance may be a tad bit slower and performance may be hindered by a very low end CPU. Not that much, but some RAID power or speed is actually handled by your CPU. Now, when it comes to the BIOS RAID, of course, that's non-existent because it has its own RAID controller. But uh, yeah, for the ease of use, Windows RAID is the big thumbs up. And also with the Windows RAID, you can move your two or more drives that you placed on a RAID and you can just place it to another system. And that system has a high probability to read the RAID that you've done. Okay, now that you know the difference between a Windows RAID versus a BIOS RAID, I'm gonna talk about the different types of RAIDs. Yay! So you're probably kind of familiar with different numberings on the RAID. There are actually a lot of RAIDs, but what I have in the screen right now are the main RAIDs that you're going to be accessing, especially from Windows, which I'll be showing you again later on. But let me first talk about how RAID works or the specific types of RAID, like how they work in a nutshell. So let's first talk about a new span volume. So one terabyte drive, one terabyte drive, you combine them through the Windows RAID system whatsoever. Now it appears as a two terabyte drive, but how the file works within it is, let's say I made a notepad file in there. It's only going to be written technically on still one of the drives. So they show as one drive, but they're kind of working, you know, not really simultaneously still, if that makes sense. So basically if I write the drive, Windows decided to put it on drive number two. Um, if drive number one dies, my notepad file should still be able to be recovered or accessible. So yeah, that's that. The second one, RAID 0, very, very famous type of RAID. Why? Because this is where all the speed gains is possible. Yes, there's going to be performance increase if you do this, but be aware because drive one and drive two will now share everything together so if i drop off a notepad file there the information of that notepad file will be scattered across both of the drives so if one of the drive fails i don't think you can still recover the notepad file so yeah that's just how it works now for the numerated volume or raid one this is where safety comes in read and write speed might be improved slightly but i doubt probably even a little lower sometimes, depending on your drives, of course. But if one of the disks fails because it's like one terabyte plus one terabyte drive, it's actually not a plus, what's gonna happen is it's a duplicate. So you're only still gonna be able to use one terabyte if, even if you have two one terabyte drives. Um, but if one of those fails, lucky for you, you just gotta swap it out and everything would still work just as fine because it's basically just a backup backup. So great. Now, the last one is called a RAID 5 volume. Not much people actually access this or use this, but you need three drives and it gives a moderate amount of performance boost while also allows you to do a one disk um, failure. So 
basically it's kind of like a combination of RAID 0 and RAID 1. So part of your drives are going to be set into RAID 0 and part of your drives will also be set into, you guessed it, RAID 1. So you got the um, backup, the fault tolerance of that, plus some speed boost, but not as much as a RAID 0. Um, but yeah, that's practically it. But what I'm going to be doing in this video is RAID 0 because I want speed, I want power, and all I'm going to be doing to the drive that I'll be doing it or the drives that I'll be doing in this video would be, you know, just dump games in it. So it's not that important. Okay, what you're seeing right now is my Windows Explorer just showing you that I have four drives in total in the system as of the moment of recording this video. And as you can see, I have uh, a Toshiba drive and also a Barracuda drive. Now, just a fair warning, you might want to check if your hard drives have the same speed and whatsoever if they are very similar to specs because if one of the drives are working better than the other then it's kind of gonna bottleneck the speed of your other drive if that makes sense but yeah let's move on now as you can see i have them separate right now but what we're gonna do is head over to my start menu and search for partition right here i'm trying to type disk as kind of like a muscle memory but on windows 11 it's faster to just type part and it's going to show up as create and format hard disk partitions but you can just also try and type disk management and that should also pop up but windows 11 is a little weird so typing part is the fastest way now after opening that you're actually going to pop up into what i just said disk management now from disk management as you can see i have a lot of drives installed in whatsoever i even have an external one but once again, I'm choosing the Barracuda and Toshiba one. They're both hard drives, uh, 7200 RPM. They're this zero and this one right now. So all I got to do is right click it and then delete the volume for both of the drives. Now you can right click one of the drives and go ahead and choose the type of volume that you want to do. But I want the speed, as I said earlier. So we're going to be selecting strip volume. This one will pop up. Just press next. And from here, you just want to move your other extra drive that uh, we deleted the volume off as well to the um, right side so you press next pressing next you just gotta go ahead and select the letter and then just press next now after pressing next this thing would pop up of course ntfs you can set your allocation unit size i'm not going to be talking about that in this video so just set that to default um perform a quick format um, if you want to do a full format then sure if you're using SSDs, I think quick format should just be fine. Um, but even I, with this hard drives or these hard drives, I'll be just using a quick format. And of course, you can type your own volume label. Now, after that's done, you can just go ahead and press next. Um, a warning would, of course, appear because it's hard to recover files from a RAID. Now, just press OK. If you're good to go, make sure you've selected the proper drives. And once that's done, it's going to pop up something like this. And as you can see, it just says formatting on both the drives might take a little while, but here you go. This zero and this one, as you can see, they have the names of each other's name, the storage space name, and also it has the raids, um, raid storage space letter or drive letter. It's going to pop up, open folder. And as you can see, there you go. It now pops up as a two terabyte storage drive space. Now to unraid the raid or disassemble it, all you got to do now is, of course, head back again to the disk management tab and on the volume section, you can actually see the name of your drive. So just right click that and go ahead and press delete volume. Another warning sign will appear. Everything here would be very hard to recover, even if you're professional at it. Now, if this thing appears, you just go ahead and press yes again. And then there you go, it's going to be unallocated. Now, what you can do here is to just practically make a new uh, volume out of it. Just right click the drives and go ahead and click on create simple volume for the both of them. And you can assign them their own specific letters. Uh, but yeah, that will be this video. Again, this is Alan from Infiltrated Bits. Thanks so much guys for watching this video. If it did help you making your raids, um, whatsoever then hit that like button and of course a subscription that sounds so weird to say just subscribe to my youtube channel 
Now, if you're wondering if it's worth it to do a RAID 0 on a hard drive on an SSD, and if you want to learn more about the speeds themselves, I'll be making a video as well. The difference between um, no RAIDs, uh, like a SSD versus hard drive versus hard drive with RAID versus SSD with RAIDs versus a PCIe adapter to SSD or M.2 versus um, an external hard drive. Yeah, it's pretty random, but it's going to be quite fun. So yeah, I'll see you there.